Uh, just give me one minute. I'll let you know when it says it's recording. Sure. Okay, you should be good to start. Okay, so welcome everyone to the Crime Busters kickoff meeting. My name is Kathleen Serraza and a bit of backstory. I'm a graduate student at Wayne State. Chemistry is my favorite subject. That's why I'm pursuing graduate studies and I'm very happy to see you all today, even if it's not under normal circumstances. So to start, I'd like to give an overview of uh, this kickoff meeting. I'll first go over the event parameters. Then I will go over the different kinds of evidence that your students will encounter during our event, as well as uh, how the criminal is identified, as well as uh, the scoring of the event. So this event, the team size is one or two students and the time allotted for the students to complete the event is 30 minutes. I will be giving um, reminder intervals uh, throughout the event so they know how much time they have. And the whole objective of this event is to identify the suspects that committed a PG rated crime using evidence found at the crime scene. There are six different types of evidence that were found at the crime scene. There will be powders, ink samples, fingerprints, footprints, tire prints, and unspecified evidence. And I think it will be easier if I actually have a laser pointer. And there are five suspects that were found at the crime scene, and they will be labeled A through E. This will come into play later when I talk about the uh, mechanics of the event. So your students should bring four items. First are goggles. The goggles should enclose around the eyes completely and they should be able to fit well. Both students should have goggles and if they do not have goggles and um, I will have some spares available. If there are no spares available after um, any students that didn't bring goggles uh, procure them, then they will not be able to compete. So please make sure that you get goggles for your students. Also make sure that each student has at least one pencil or pen because that's what they will be using to fill out the sheets for the events that allow me to assess how they did. They will also be able to bring one two-sided index card or sheet of paper up to 11 uh, by 8.5 inches. They will share that amongst the two of them and they're able to write anything they want that will help them throughout the event, as well as a magnifying glass. These four items will help them um, for the various portions of the event since they'll be having to um, identify substances and uh, look at pictures under finite detail. So make sure they have all of these. As for what I'll provide them, I will provide them a list of possible powders as well as tap water, vinegar, and iodine solution. I will also provide plastic cups, spoons, black paper, and toothpicks to help them identify the different chemicals that I'll be giving them, as well as chromatogram materials and isopropyl um, alcohol, which is also known as rubbing alcohol. I will also be giving them three different sheets. Um, there will be the uh, Crime Buster sheet where they'll be able to follow along uh, on the different portions of the event where they'll be able to identify the different powders that are given to them, identify uh, which ink corresponds to which ink sample given to the uh, students by the suspects, as well as the different print materials, which I didn't um, feature here. I will also give them a zip grade form and uh, one big takeaway is that make sure your students are able to um, fill out all these portions on the zip grade and the actual crime buster sheet. So they should fill out their school name, team number, student names, as well as um, these portions on the zip grade because if I can't easily identify which um, group the papers belong to, it may uh, slow down the grading process and um, 
Yeah, so please make sure that they fill out all portions of the identification um, areas on the sheets. So I know whose is who, since I'll be collecting anywhere from 10 to 40 uh, sheets since there's about that many groups um, throughout the years. Also, um, Nikita, am I able to let in students or, sorry, am I allowed to uh, let in other individuals into this session or is that solely under your um, control? Um, I'm not sure, but as I see students coming in, I'm letting them in. If you do see the pop up, um, yeah, you're free to click admit, but okay. I am just letting them in as I see them come in. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, of course. Okay, so continuing on with this presentation. So the first part of uh, Crime Busters is that they are given powders that um, they will have to identify. And there are six different cups of powders that are given to them. Cup one corresponds to the powder found at the crime scene and cups A through E correspond to powder samples given to the students from the five different suspects featured earlier, suspects A through E. What they have to do, they have to use the various materials that are provided to them to identify uh, which powders are in what cups, and they can use the black paper to see what it looks like against a dark background. They'll also be able to use the water, vinegar, and iodine solutions, as well as cups and toothpicks and spoons that are provided. If they need more of these materials, I will have ample amounts. Um, so if they need more, they just need to raise their hand. There we go. And there are 10 different kinds of powders that can be given to them, such as baking soda, calcium carbonate, cornstarch, flour, gelatin, granulated sugar, salt, white cornmeal, yeast, and Alka-Seltzer powder. Please note that, excuse me, these combinations of powders such as cornstarch and flour and Alka-Seltzer, baking soda, and or calcium carbonate will not be provided because these are very difficult to um, discern against one another, even given all of the materials previously stated. These powders can be into combinations of one to three within each cup. So for instance, cup A may contain two powders, cup B may contain one powder, uh, cup C may contain three powders and so on and so forth. It's random. They won't necessarily know unless they uh, are familiar with how these solutions um, interact with the different powders listed. So make sure that when you guys are practicing that uh, they are able to tell, for instance, if I put uh, vinegar and water together, what's going to happen? What are the physical properties that change? Um, as well as how they look under uh, paper, they can use the toothpicks to move it around, see how it looks before and after it's wet. I also suggest that um, the students practice using finite amounts of each powder at one time. The powders that are in, placed in front of them, once they're done, they're done. So. If for instance, they uh, run out of powder A, they can't get any more of that, even if they didn't really figure out what was in it. So make sure that they're very uh, frugal with how much they use when they want to test it with the different solutions. Um, the second part of Crime Busters is chromatography. At each crime scene, uh, there at the crime scene, there was an ink sample found, and uh, we had the suspects give their own ink sample. They are all placed on chromatography paper, and there is a hole punch at the top. What the students need to do first is, before they place it into the isopropyl alcohol featured here, they have to make sure that they um, draw a not a fine line, but a light line using their pencil, not pen, to denote where the top of the isopropyl alcohol should meet with the chromatography paper. If the uh, isopropyl alcohol is above the lines of ink, 
the chromatography paper will not do what it's supposed to because what you are supposed to see is that the different components of the ink will travel up the paper um, as it sits in the isopropyl alcohol and you want to make sure that the paper lies at a point where it's not over the ink. In order to put the chromatography paper into the cup of isopropyl alcohol, they will use their pencil, put it through the hole punch in the chromatography paper and lower the paper into the cup of isopropyl alcohol. Um, if they find there's too much isopropyl alcohol in the cup, they can notify me or one of my um, volunteers and we will make the uh, isopropyl alcohol level appropriate. So they can tell us that they need more or less, but um, just make sure that they are familiar with how to place it into the alcohol. And there are videos or there should be videos on my Crime Busters uh, website provided by um, Macomb Science Olympia that they can also reference as well as yourselves on how to go about developing a, a chromatogram. So um, that is the second portion of the Crime Busters event. Parts three, four, and five consist of uh, analyzing different prints. Part three is always fingerprints, part four are footprints, and part five are tire prints. So these prints can be in picture form, so they will be given uh, sheets labeled part three, they'll see the fingerprints, then on a different page, part four, uh, pictures of footprints, part five, pictures of tire prints, and these prints can be partial prints, especially uh, looking at the fingerprints and footprints, or they can be obscured in some way. So they might be given only part of a fingerprint instead of a whole fingerprint, or uh, they may see that the prints may be obscured by, let's say, um, I mean, it's photocopied, but they would have maybe been obscured by dirt or just it was smudged in some way. So um, the whole objective is to match the fingerprints, footprints, and tire prints to that of the um, prints found at the scene. And all five suspects will be providing these as well as uh, with the chromatogram, they provide the ink samples. The magnifying glass is going to be very useful because they can look at the different features of the prints to try and match what was found at the crime scene to what the suspects are given. As for part six, with the unspecified evidence, it's going to be an additional piece of evidence that uh, is not standard to these events. Some examples are hair strands, writing uh, samples, and pH tests that they may have to do, but it's not limited to just those examples. It's uh, whatever would be provided that specific year. So what I suggest when you are practicing unspecified uh, evidence portion is to be creative when practicing. So you might want to um, perhaps like have students write a word and then they can use their magnifying glass to uh, look at the similarities and differences between the different scripts. Um, you can also, uh, if you wanted to like, Perhaps look up uh, forensic um, materials that could be found in like a PG crime rate uh, related scene and uh, see how you can, you know, just spice up practicing when you guys are uh, preparing for this event. So uh, the answers that you determine from parts one to six will implicate one or two suspects, no more than two. And you'll record the answers to part one through seven on the uh, zip grade sheet. So they'll bubble in um, which suspect corresponded to the uh, evidence found at the crime scene. The test will be out of 100 points and there will be tiebreaker questions provided in the event that two teams um, tie for a certain place. There will also be um, a tiebreaker for the tiebreaker where the chromatogram quality will determine who will win if uh, two teams get the same score and they get both or uh, however many tiebreaker questions are provided. So make sure that when you um, practice your chromatograms, um, it's good to identify what 
the ink sample found at the crime scene is, but it's also good to make sure that when it's developed, um, it's not overly saturated with the alcohol or when, if we go back to the diagram of the chromatogram, make sure that the lines are not crossing one, one another. We will determine the second tiebreaker based on that. So some final notes, start practicing early, make use of the note sheet. They can use both sides. And I've seen people, uh, they make a table of like, let's say baking soda, when it reacts with water, it looks like this. When it reacts with baking soda, it looks like this and so on and so forth. Um, use the note sheet to your advantage. Familiarize yourself with the event format. So that means um, just looking at the sample um, answer sheets and zip grade sheets and having your students be comfortable uh, filling those out. Also, make sure to have fun. And uh, I suppose uh, with the pandemic, it's a bit uncertain on how uh, Science Olympiad will look in the coming months. So just look for updates from um, the organization. And if things need to change on my event, that will be updated as we get more information. So for now, do uh, people have any questions? I can also go over things again if you want me to talk through a certain part, but please uh, let me know if you have any questions. Happy to answer. Water. I have a question about the note sheet. Sure, sure. Um, when they prepare that, is that something like the students would write themselves or is that something that would be typed up that they would prepare? So I'm okay with either, whatever works for them. Um, as long as they stay between the 8.5 by 11 uh, sheet maximum. It's good. OK, and they share it, right? They don't each bring their own. Yep, yep. OK, thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I think I missed um, when you said the different uh, materials they'll be using, um, looking for like the, the vinegar and all that stuff. You had the red sign with the line through it. Those are things that will not be mixed by you, correct? I'm sorry, I have a lot of little ones running around in the background, so I, I totally missed that. No, that's no problem, no worries. Let me go back to that slide. So um, this right here, these two combinations of powders, Alka-Seltzer, baking soda, calcium carbonate, that will not be featured in one of these cups because they're too hard to identify if they're in the same cup. Same with cornstarch and flour, um, regardless of if you uh, like use a toothpick or the magnifying glass or if you like put any of the solutions on there, um, it's very hard to differentiate these two groupings of powders. So um, you don't have to practice those combinations when you're figuring out how the powders interact with the um, water, vinegar and iodine solution. OK, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Is there any maximum combination for each cup? So maximum is three, three powders. OK, thanks. Mm -hmm. Also, will your PowerPoint be available like if we want to look back at it? Um, yeah, I just so want to make sure. Oh, N Nikita, go ahead. Um, the, this whole recording will be posted um, in a couple of days. So the PowerPoint will be available after today. OK, thank you. And also, I have a handout for today. Um, so I can give it to Nikita to post. I am not sure if I can actually put it into the chat, given that it's not on a website necessarily. It's more of a, a PDF that I have. So um, either way, you'll get the actual uh, sheet that I had for today eventually and you can also look at the rules online 
on the Crime Busters website. I can actually show you guys the website right now, if that's okay. So when you look on the websites, there we go. Yep, so in order to, can you guys see the screen right now? I should have some red background. Yes, okay. yes we can. So if you Google Crime Busters, Macomb Elementary, that's what I use when I want to get to uh, the Crime Busters page, click on the first link and you should see the Crime Busters page. You'll see uh, me as well as any of the current rules. Um, this will be updated for the 2021 event coach workshop as well as the sample answer sheets and how to use the answer sheets. Um, there's also videos uh, that can be available, especially for the chromatography portion. And there will be facts that will be featured on the website. And what's nice about the facts is that you can submit them um, through this website. I believe uh, you can submit them somewhere. Um, maybe Nikita can uh, help me with that, but um, they will be sent to me and I can clarify any questions you guys have about rules through the facts section. So make sure you look through this website and uh, if you have any questions, they might be answered here. If not, you can submit um, a question that will be answered. So yeah, there's a lot of good stuff here. Um, I suggest you look at this periodically throughout the season and um, if time permits for me, uh, I will try to pull together some things that could help you guys, like maybe some videos or I can like give uh, sample evidence sheets if that'll help and if I'm allowed to do that, which I think uh, I may be, so it's good to check every now and then. Are there any more questions? Um, I guess I have a question for you guys. Uh, was there any mention of a like practice kit that can be provided by um, Macomb Elementary Science Olympiad for you to practice for my event? Yes, ours did. Our coach in our meeting said there would be kits available to pick up. Okay. Okay. So uh, that's good. I uh, suggest you get the kit because it really does help. Um, but you can also get these materials on your own too. Just might be easier if you have it uh, from us since it's compact and uh, um, we provide materials such as uh, magnifying glass. There's like an ink pad in there as well as solutions and all the powders. So yeah, uh, whichever works for um, when you want to start preparing. Will the kit that we get look exactly like the ones the kids get the kids get at the day of the event? So in terms of um, they won't look exactly like it because, for instance, um, when we give you the powder, you'll get more than what's actually supplied to the students because the kit was made to do multiple practice sessions. Um, also, in the kit, there will not be those sheets uh, that I featured in the presentation there, but you can find that online. But otherwise, the powders uh, should be the same as um, what I'll be providing, as well as the solutions. Um, I'm trying to remember if there's anything else in there. Magnifying glass can be used for the event, but yeah. Um, to answer your question fully, just more of the powders than what you'll expect at the event. You also get like the black sheet of paper, um, as well as chromatography paper to use as well. So I believe there is no rubbing alcohol in there though. So um, it's good to have some isopropyl alcohol on hand for using those kits if you choose to get them.
Are there any other questions? Anything um, you guys want me to go through again? Um, I guess if you don't mind sharing how your season is going, because I know it might be kind of challenging trying to um, prepare students if social distancing has to be in place. Well, um, okay. If there are no more questions, just make sure if you have questions, submit them and uh, you'll see them answered in the facts uh, portion of the Crime Busters website eventually. Uh, just watch out for any updates uh, regarding how any practice event as well as the actual tournament will go if it's going to happen or not. This will be posted as well as the, um, excuse me, the kickoff uh, sheet that I was talking about in a few days so you can look back at that and I look forward to working with you guys during the season and hopefully like this is going to happen in May so thank you everyone thanks for your presentation Kathleen I'm going to stop the recording now okay thank you